You're planning on doing an overseeding project, aren't you? I am. This small little patch of green grass, before it turns brown, is gonna get overseeded today with Kentucky bluegrass. You see, grass can look pretty good when it's far away, but you know as good as I do, when you get close, you're gonna start seeing spots of bare dirt here and there and a little bit everywhere. And that's exactly why we overseed. I don't want you to mess up your overseeding project right at the beginning, so I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm doing today to make sure that this project does not fail. I don't want yours to fail either. With all of that out of the way, you can see I've already done it. I'm recording this after the fact, but it's the same day, all of this is the same day. This right here is 50 square feet. Everything that I'm gonna to talk to you about in this video has, is gonna be completely applicable, whether you're doing 1,500 square feet, 15,000 square feet, or just 50. The equipment that you use might get a little bit more robust the bigger a size area that you are overseeding gets, but everything else is basically the same. What you really need to do if you're gonna be overseeding a lawn is cut the lawn short. But before you cut the lawn short, you really gotta water the lawn deep. So this is something a lot of people don't, don't talk about. If you water the lawn really deep, then that means that the soil level, like all of the soil in the lawn space that you're overseeding is gonna be thoroughly wet. When we put seed down, we're spritzing it a lot. We're not like heavily watering it. We gotta keep it moist, but we don't want it to pool and like move around. So we don't overwater it. So to get the water into the ground and get the ground adequately wet, we need to water heavy before we ever put seed down. So yesterday, I didn't put that on camera, but yesterday I watered the lawn very heavily, at least that lawn space right there, that tiny little spot. I watered it heavily and deeply and then let it sit overnight and through the morning. Everything kind of dried out a little bit, but the soil stayed moist. Assuming that the grass blades are dry, you want to grab your lawnmower, put the bag on, and bring the mower blade down closer to the ground than you're used to. Now, I usually cut all of my grass very short, shorter than most people. So whatever you normally cut your grass at, bring your mower blade down one to two notches because while the grass seed is germinating, we're going to be spritzing it a lot and we're covering it. You see what I'm doing back there? I'm covering it. We can't mow the grass when it's covered and we don't really want to be mowing brand new baby grass or rolling over it with the tires. Cut the grass blades down a little bit more than you normally would. Now you might have to break the one third rule, but it's okay to break rules every now and then if there's a reason to do so. After cutting the grass and bagging it, the reason that we bag it is because we don't want extra grass clippings on the ground. The whole point of putting grass seed on the ground is to get seed to soil contact. We need seed to soil contact. If the seed is not touching the soil, it's not going to germinate. So we get the clippings off the ground so that when we put the seed down, it's gonna be sitting on the soil itself. After bagging your clippings and getting it down, cut down low, we're gonna grab an electric dethatcher if you have one. This is not the most necessary thing in the world, but it does help quite a bit. I grab an electric dethatcher from Greenworks. There are others out there. They're all very similar. There are differences in them, and I've got some information about the differences in them, which I'll link to down below. It's over on my website. I don't have a video on it. Uh, so you can take a look at that if you want. But regardless of what brand you use and what model you use, go over it with a dethatcher so that you're scratching up the soil surface. The soil surface gets scratched up, it gets scored. It's gonna create little grooves in the soil surface. So when we put down grass seed, the grass seed is gonna accumulate for the most part in those grooves. That's gonna give us really good seed to soil contact. I then take my mower over it again to bag up that stuff. You could use a rake, but it's just a lot easier to use the mower on the bagger setting. At this point, I pull out the peat moss out of my garage, stick it in bowls, and I pre-moisten it. Now, you can put peat moss down dry, and that's fine. Peat moss holds in moisture. The problem is when it's dry, it repels water uh, a lot. It takes a lot of water to fully hydrate peat moss. So I like to moisten it ahead of time. So what I did for this spot here is I stuck some peat moss into bowls, threw a whole bunch of water into it, kind of mixed it up with my hands, and then let it sit for about an hour to fully hydrate itself. While that was happening, I then pulled out the, uh, the sprayer. I mixed up a very small batch of liquid aeration product. The liquid aeration product goes down in the lawn. It's gonna add a little bit of humic acid, but it's also gonna soften the soil a little, a little bit. How does it soften the soil? Ah, eh. <laughs> you ask a lot of different people and you get a lot, get a lot of different answers. But it does kind of soften the soil. There are university studies out there that show that soft, that soils are softened when you apply liquid aeration products. So that's what I did. 
this soil right here is actually pretty soft. I ran a core aerator over, a manual one over it, and uh, the, the soil was just kind of like crumbling out. It's already soft. So if you have compacted soil, I would advise that you run a manual core aerator over it if you're doing it, uh, if you're doing a small space. If you're doing a larger space, like a big, huge lawn space, then go rent a a uh, mechanical core aerator, core aerator it's going to loosen up that soil deep down so that when root systems push down they have space to easily move down lower into the ground here on this tiny little spot i opted to not core aerate and only put down the liquid product i should say before the liquid product went down i actually applied a starter fertilizer it was a granular product the reason i put the granular down first is because the grass was dry so if you put a liquid down first and then put a granular, the granular kind of sticks to the liquid and gets stuck to grass blades. Uh, you want to put granulars down before liquids. Go ahead and put, put down the granular first. Uh, a granular starter fertilizer has um, a higher percentage of phosphorus in it. That's basically what makes it a starter fertilizer. The phosphorus is going to help roots start developing in uh, the new baby grass. Once that granular is on the ground, then I spray the liquid product on, the liquid aeration product down, and then I sprayed it all in lightly with a hose because really all of the stuff coming from that liquid product, I want it on the soil, not necessarily grass blades. At this point, it's time to actually spread the grass seed on the ground. Now, if I had a very large lawn space, I would just use the spreader that you see back there. It's tipped over because we got wind. With a larger lawn space, you're going to go ahead and throw your grass seed into the spreader and run around the yard based on bag rates for overseeding. So here I've got perennial rye underneath that crop cover over there, and I overseeded with Kentucky bluegrass. So I overseeded with a smaller portion of uh, seed than I would use if I was uh, seeding bare dirt. Because I'm only dealing with about 50 square feet, I just hand seeded it. You could also get one of those little like twirly things. Uh, what is this? Scott's twirl or whirl or whatever they're called uh, twist I don't know what it's called I don't actually own one because I don't use it I do little spaces where I use where I use my hand uh, bigger spaces I would just use a, a, a spreader back there but uh, it's up to you use whatever you want the point here is to put the appropriate amount on the lawn evenly so if you can do it by hand do it by hand if you don't think you can do it evenly by hand then grab a hand spreader or a push spreader you could do a broadcast or a drop spreader uh, i have down in the description below i've got a link uh, over to the website where i explain the difference between a drop spreader and a broadcast um, if you're unfamiliar uh, hand works just fine for these small little areas after sticking the grass seed down under the ground that's when I like, I personally like to put down alfalfa meal on top of it. Alfalfa meal isn't exactly a starter fertilizer, but I kind of lump it in there with the starter fertilizer. It's an organic natural nitrogen fertilizer. It's alfalfa meal. So uh, it's going to slowly feed the lawn over a long period of time. The uh, starter fert is usually pretty fast acting. The alfalfa meal is slower acting and there are some natural biostimulants in there that uh, push root growth without the extra dose of phosphorus. For that, I just hand spreaded it. Like literally I grabbed a, a blob of it out of my hand and sprinkled it all over the space. It's really safe stuff. So, so long as you're not dumping a whole bag in one spot, you're probably gonna be all right. With the seed down and the whole area top dressed with alfalfa meal, that's when I go and get my rehydrated or my super hydrated peat moss. Now, if you use dry peat moss, it's pretty easy to throw it into a peat moss spreader, especially for a larger lawn space. You would probably want to use a peat moss spreader, invest the money on it, just gigantic drum roller that pushes over the lawn. Again, for small spaces, just use your hands. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, you get a little bit dirty. You're going to take a shower every day anyway. Um, get your hands dirty, throw some peat moss down, but I like to put down the wetted the pre-moistened stuff that I moistened earlier in the day. It goes down kind of in clumps, but once you put it down on the ground relatively evenly, all you got to do is just kind of step on it and kind of brush it with your foot and it all kind of crumbles, breaks apart and spreads pretty nicely over the area. Obviously, the larger your area is, the more time consuming this will be, but it's worth it. Um, if you put dry peat moss down, it takes a lot of water to hydrate it. 
So essentially you're going to put seed down and then cover it with dry peat moss and any water that you put on it is going to be wetting the peat moss and it's going to take a long time for the wetted peat moss to actually wet the seed below it. So it's just going to delay the process. I would rather do it this way because everything is just faster. I then just walk over it, like I said, and I just kind of grind it in lightly with my foot to the ground. Uh, you could probably use a lawn leveler if you had a larger space to kind of grind it into the ground lightly. Uh, that would work too. I would use that if I was doing something in the vicinity of thousands of square feet or more. Now, once the wetted peat moss is on top of it, I like to spritz the whole thing down anyway. That helps push the peat moss down and get anything wet that didn't quite hydrate like I thought it did. This is what people don't talk about when it comes to seeding a lawn or overseeding a lawn. I like to cover it. So what you see behind me, that white cloth right there, that is crop cover. It's, a, it's like a shade cloth that is typically used in a garden like you see behind me. Cloth like that is very inexpensive. You can usually get a roll of it that covers, I mean, darn near a thousand square feet for a very small amount of money. So if you're spending a lot of money on equipment and seed, you might as well spend I don't know, 20 to 40 to $60 more for some crop cover because literally you can put the crop cover down on top of it, pin it down with the little like garden stakes, and that's gonna stop birds from coming down and eating the seed. It's gonna stop wind from uh, dehydrating the whole area uh, nearly as quick. Sunlight is gonna be able to go through, so your grass underneath it is going to continue growing just unaffected. Moisture is gonna be able to go through it as well. So if you come out with your hose and you spray it down, the water is still going to go through it and wet everything underneath it. Keep everything moist so that seed can germinate properly. Now, if you're doing overseeding in the, at the end of summer, going into fall, your seed is gonna germinate very quickly. For me, I'm doing Kentucky bluegrass, which is typically about a 10 to 14 day germination period. Uh, I actually don't expect this seed to last more than seven to 10 days. Uh, without germinating. It's all going to germinate very quickly. Right now as I'm recording this, it's a Tuesday. So literally next Tuesday, I'm going to come out, take that crop cover off and uh, see where we stand. I'm probably going to have a lot of sprouts in my dirt spots. As for mowing, I mowed it really short going into this project and I'm not going to mow it this entire week. Once I take the crop cover off next week, I'm going to reassess, but most likely I'm not going to mow the grass again for another 10 days from today so i put the seed down i'm not going to mow the grass for at least another 10 days at that point my regular established grass is going to be taller than normal and my baby grass is going to be sprouts i might wait till a full 14 days before i mow again for that mow i'm going to mow it a little bit higher than normal so that i can cut the established grass back down a little bit and give the baby grass more time to grow and establish itself and mature a little bit before the mower blades actually start hitting it. I would greatly encourage you to go down into the description below. I have an entire article on the website, link below. It is a Q&A about lawn overseeding. There are like a thousand questions that people ask about overseeding a lawn. I have fielded many of them myself. I get tons of questions and there are more questions than I could ever think of to address in this video, let alone fit into this video. Go into the description below, take a look at that article over on my website. It should answer most of the frequently asked questions, some of the things that I didn't address in this video. But point being here, I really want you to understand this. This is not hard. It's harder for me to make this video than it is to do this. So you can do it. I know that I'm doing a small little space, but if I were doing the entire yard, it wouldn't take me much longer to do it than it did just to do this 50 square foot spot. Prep work for each step is the same regardless of how big of a space you're doing it. You can do it, it's not that hard. Growing grass is a lot easier than a lot of people make it seem. 